Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hello, hello, Diane. Nice to have you on the show, finally. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on today. Oh my goodness. Well, obviously, we will get to Warrior and chat all of things um, <laughs> that's on the mind lately. But I have to say, I'm really excited because um, we have a little Mulan connection. And- oh my gosh. <laughs> And I just thought it was so much fun that you played Lonnie, of course, who's the daughter of Mulan and Shang, which, you know, um, which is a little weird because then it's kind of like, oh, or, you know, you're like my daughter, <laughs> which is fun. It was, it, no, it's so crazy because that little tidbit I had, I really had no idea. And it was right before our Zoom where we had initially met and Langley told me, I was going to say Hoon, but Langley yeah. kind of gave me a heads up and I right before we were going on I was freaking out I'm like wait what <laughs> um so that is so so cool and I'm like forever proud any any kind of relation I have to move on in that story is like just bonkers to me that and like yeah Bruce Lee I mean there's so many things in in my life that I've, I've I'm just like who would have thought but I think that is so cool I mean like, I, know, I, I love I, it I but I was freaking out to meet you. Um, and I wanted to I know you were freaking it. out, but it, I mean, Langley also. I was internally. So I really he was wasn't. probably like really talking it up. I don't know what he said pre roll. Like right when I entered the room, you're like, oh, and then Langley's all like, I told her all about you. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> but he's the sweetest, so. You did, you did all the action? Yeah. So like a million years ago, uh, <laughs> I basically cool. am in Orlando and our Kung Fu school, we do a lot with Disney. So we we did like the grand opening for the Epcot China Pavilion in like the 80s. Uh, so we worked together a lot. And then when, when they were working on the film, the animation team at that time was Orlando based. So we were okay. here in Orlando and uh, we went over there to do some work with the animators, show them Tai Chi, get them into like the whole ambiance, the yeah. mood. And and then, and then, yeah, the producers and Mark Hen, who's the lead animator, was still looking for like the face of Mulan and, and kind of the action. And when I walked in, I was like a teenager at the time. So it was like the right age and the right time. And he just loved that I did martial arts. And so he brought me in to just do all of the action as well as like um, character drawing. So I went to the animation studios a lot. And Wait, um, Langley didn't me. say character drawing. So wait, I'm sorry. Mulan? Is based. You are Mulan. <laughs> yes. That, he just said the action, and I already thought that was amazing. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he used me, my likeness, I guess you call it, for the character. And then I also did all the video. So like the credits, because you know Di- you know Disney, you work, you work with Disney, um, but the credits are like martial arts video reference. But like I worked with yeah. Mark Hen on all of the, like like he basically, he drew me and then also videoed sequence because it wasn't motion capture, did all the action stuff. So right. I choreographed all of that. It was actually my cousin that was Shang and they drew him for it. And and then we did the fighting, which was why it was super awkward when, you know, Mulan 2, they're like, oh, they're getting married. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's my cousin. But but yeah, so so we did that back in the back in the day in the 90s. And um, it was so much fun. But it, it lasts forever, which is what I was going to ask you about, which is like, you know, the Disney characters is so evergreen and it's just this long lasting thing and and it's um it's it's stuck with me all these years so I do comic cons because of it and it's a lot of fun but yeah it's pretty wild wait I just want to say I'm I'm kind of notorious because I I get I get extra nervous and insecure not insecure but when I look people up so I don't like to like I want to hear it from you firsthand and that's just how I I like to work. Um, there's been instances in Hollywood, you know, it's Hollywood where they're like, you didn't look me up. I'm like, no, oh. but I'm so glad I didn't because I just love hearing how your story and your experience and like your mm. face and your are on. <laughs> I have Velcro running shoes in the second grade that were Mulan. And I was so proud because we never got like fancy shoes growing up and they were my pride and joy. And that is crazy that that was you and a few years ago, I worked with Ming-Na Wen. And when yes. I met her, I was like, 
dying. I yes. was just dying. I, I feel didn't you. know how to. I'm sure people bring it up to her all the time, but I didn't know when the right, you know, when was appropriate. Being like, well, now we're we're working together, and it's this weird, you know, I'm not meeting you in a different circumstance. But yeah, this is so fun. Yes, yes. Mulan. It was such a to wrap it kind of back up. Such a pivotal experience for me as an mm-hmm. actor coming from Vancouver and. I originally auditioned as a dancer for Descendants. I grew up dancing and I was a professional dancer in Vancouver. And I didn't even know that they were doing a, like, I didn't know that Lonnie or Mulan's child would be a part of the Descendants franchise. But I just remember asking, like, in what world would there be an opportunity for me in this movie? And lo and behold, Lonnie came along. And and that kind of, like, was my first big role that kind of got me started in the industry and um you know it got me my uh visa my work visa to come down to the state so i'm like forever grateful for disney and and descendants and, and what it's done for me and, and where i am today so and it and it all was lonnie like mulan which is just wild to me. i know like <laughs> I, yeah my 20 something birthday i can't remember which number i'm also not gonna divulge which number <laughs> um my sisters got me like a dairy queen ice cream cake because those are my favorite with like Mulan I love like it that's that's how big of a you know Aww. an impact that movie had on me it was like arguably the first relatable character that I saw myself on screen and I think mm-hmm. for a lot of young girls as well yes and yes. to carry on that kind of that legacy and that's so weird to say but a lot of young women come up to me today being like you know they were eight and now they're 18 which is wild to think about but or 16 <laughs> let's not say it's that old a movie but <laughs> just to say that you know Lonnie was someone that they looked up to watching Descendants which is just yeah really special really special yeah and I'm sure I, you hear it too <laughs> all the time definitely definitely and it, it's a much older film than your Descendants film yeah so. Yeah. But but it's so cool because I feel like, like I said, it's so evergreen, but like to have that connectivity. And I really loved what you shared, even though you've heard it. And like you said, you know, you get to have the opportunity to speak with people that it's really made such an impact on. Because I always tell people when they ask me about the Mulan thing, like, well, you know, she's the first Disney princess that didn't need saving and was the one that like saved everyone beyond the fact that you could see yourself as, you know, an Asian representation, like beyond that alone, like that was huge, but like just the empowerment of, of the change in the female characters that Disney started to then put out and that just, just showed no more damsel in distress, right? It became like a new generation. And I think for a lot of us, you know, myself included, like it was kind of a weird thing to be involved in it, but then to see it and then just still feel that impact. Right. But I think for a lot of people, they, it resonates and, you know, on, on so many different levels, but it, it was a really, it was a really cool character. And I love that, that, um, and I've met Ming-Na Wen, she's wonderful and just, <laughs> she's so gracious. And it was, it was yeah. so cool. Cause it was like the Mulan reunion, you know, I just, oh. it, it, I just need to meet Leah now. <laughs> like we need to have the full like yeah. uh, reunion. So it's so much fun, but yeah, it's, it's just so cool to see how there's still continuations of the character through like Lonnie and through when you see, mm-hmm. you know, kind of um, over time. And so I loved that we have a Mulan connection. I was super <laughs> excited to meet you yeah. and talk to you more at length. And and thank you, to, of course, to Langley for being so sharing because <laughs> uh, I am a little bit like, I'm not going to just like tell people, hey, by the way, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's them, such so. a weird, yeah, it's such a weird, th- it's just the same of like, what have I seen you in? And you're like, gosh, that's the worst question. Like, let's right? just talk like it, humans yes, interacting exactly. like normal people. <laughs> I don't know. I'll pull up my resume. Like, it's just such a weird, so I completely understand. But yes, <laughs> thank you, Langley, for yes, divulging yes. the information. I know. Yeah. And I want to also just kind of just talk to you a little bit about, about your background, because you, know, you grew up in Canada, and I know it's like right on the border, and I've never, I've been to Vancouver, but briefly, I, you know, and I was wondering, mm-hmm. like, what the, you know, what the, the city was like where you grew up? Was there a lot of other Asian Canadians there? Like, what was your dynamic like growing up? Because we just talked about how important important it was that you saw yourself yeah. represented in this you know in the Disney film right but then you know later fast forward to be in the Disney film yourself but like what was your you know what was that childhood kind of experience like for you 
great question. I don't know if I talked about this a lot, actually, but I, my parents immigrated to Canada in the 80s from Vietnam. And they were, they were boat people. They were in a refugee camp in Indonesia. And so they set up camp in, in Canada. And it's so funny because at the time they couldn't, you know, starting from scratch, basically, they couldn't afford living in the big city of Vancouver. So we actually grew up in a very small town. Well, it's not small anymore. I know people would hate me for saying this, but to me, it was, it felt very small town. Um, about an hour outside of Vancouver and it was extremely and it still is like very religious very Caucasian and I grew up like I think I was the only Asian like Southeast Asian within my school I didn't have any friends growing up there were there were like there was a there's a large East Indian or East Asian community um, which was wonderful. But like, besides that, it was very Caucasian. And so I, w- it was a huge culture shock to me moving to Vancouver. And I met like other Asians. Like I just was my mind was blown, which is sounds so silly. But I think being raised by immigrant parents, my, my parents, I mean, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but they were just like, you need to blend in. And mm-hmm. so kind of the j- not joke, but I grew up very whitewashed. And even the way I speak and like my partner, Manny, he will, this is like a little bit of a joke, but he's like, I don't even believe that you're Vietnamese when he first met. I think there's like, <laughs> there's a little bit of a similar stereotype with like Vietnamese community in Vancouver, especially like East Van, which is where our community mostly is. And it's mm-hmm. like a tougher area, the way you talk, the way you dress, you know, all those stereotypes. And he was like, when I first met you and I closed my eyes, I could swear you were like a white girl. I'm like, <laughs> And it's just the way I was raised, like a really, yeah, religious small town surrounded by Mm -hmm. like working class families. And when I decided to move to Vancouver was when I really started embracing my cultural background. And like, I mean, and and especially when I moved to LA, like I could scream it from the rooftops, like how proud I am to be an like Asian Canadian, Vietnamese Canadian performer, but I couldn't say I felt that way when I was growing up. I really right. couldn't. I was just like the, sh- the black sheep. I didn't understand why I was targeted for whether it's bullying or like looking back, I'm like, I really had no friends. And I'm not going to say it's because I was Asian, but I don't think it helped that I was the only girl who looked different. Right. It's It, it doesn't sound silly at all. And it, it completely makes sense. I mean, so many people have actually echoed those feelings where they grow up in in and not even small towns, but towns in which there's less diversity, right? And just a place in, in cities where it's a little bit different. I'm in, in Florida. And so very similar feelings and experiences, even though I was always surrounded by like my family and close knit, but it's like, you know, that one of the things I'm also really passionate about, and, and I'm sure that um, like we told you about, we, we also talked about was Asian American history and, or even Asian Canadian history, right? And like just those connectivities of like learning that, you know, immigrants make up the countries that you're in, right? That it's not just everyone there is just Caucasian, even though that seemed to be the majority of where you were. And so like kind of that feeling of other, right? And so like you said, unfortunately, I I guess you experienced bullying or just having those feelings, right? And so how did you, so was your coping mechanism just trying to blend in, trying to stay low key? And that was that kind of what you defaulted to? Yeah, especially growing up was just like, don't cause any problems, don't draw any attention. I mean, me being in the arts is such a kind of fascinating turn of events, I think, for my parents being like, why do you want to be, you know, in front of the camera all of a sudden? Like, we've always just been like, blend right in. <laughs> but yeah, they, you know, I'm grateful they, they put me in dance. And so I grew up doing like ballet and, and like technical styles of dance. And then when I moved to Vancouver, I kind of just figured that that was behind me, my dance background. And, and I found this community in Vancouver of dancers and, you know, a lot of them being like Filipino dancers, or it was just this, like this broad, you know, world that I had no idea because my parents sheltered us so much from, from, you know, the outside world of just, they were just, you know, they, they raised us, I personally think in a place of like fear and, and unknowing being in a new country. And so I don't blame them for anything, but definitely when I moved out to Vancouver, was I like, okay, I'm trying to figure out who I am as an Asian Canadian woman, as opposed to just like 
thinking that, you know, I not anyways, I don't want to go on, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to say anything that I'm going to be like, <laughs> I have my foot in my mouth for later, but <laughs> I didn't grow up embracing my Asian roots. No. And trying. yeah. And, and I, I actually used to feel and say things like, oh, I'm so embarrassed about that. But at the same time, it's like, you know what you know at the time. And the mm -hmm. fact that you're able to kind of go back and look back and say, wow, this was my experience. But because of work that you literally do now, you know, showing on screen like that, the world is diverse and that that characters can just be characters. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter, you know, like all of that changes things for the next generation. Like so other kids growing up in places where there maybe isn't other, um, you know, ethnicities around them that they're used to, like the work that you do and, and all of that is really essential, I think, into changing that experience. And so like we grew up feeling that way because I mean, I, I grew up in the 80s. So, you know, I'm a little older than you. But <laughs> but but, you know, you you think back like, oh, I was embarrassed. You know, I didn't want to have the weird lunch. I just did. I didn't mm -hmm. want, you know, my name is Mimi Chan and it sounds so Asian. And you just, you know, you just kind of cringe thinking about like that you didn't embrace who you were. But at the same time, I think it's just like that's who we were because that's what we were exposed to and taught and yeah. and it is it's something I think that it's we've a lot of us like you're not alone in having to kind of realize like wow like th this is this is where I'm at now but because of these experiences and so in in Vancouver how old were you when you were there was that th for college or was also for your dance career yeah I I mean I I moved out the second I could like out of, <laughs> not out of home but I definitely was like I miss being at home but yeah. out of <laughs> A little small town that I grew up in. <laughs> so I moved out at 18 okay. and convinced my parents to give me like a gap year okay. and to try acting. That little naive girl looking back, I'm like, what did I expect to happen in like a year's time when I would, I would drive from my Abbotsford is where I grew up. I drive from Abbotsford uh, to Vancouver on the weekend to do like one acting course, thinking that I would just like book something and, and, you know, be a star. Or, I don't know what I expected back then. Um, but after the year, I I, um, I started dancing for um, contemporary dance companies in Vancouver while, you know, going to school part time. I didn't go full time, but I was I got into business school. So I was doing that and, and like acting kind of fell by the wayside because I couldn't fully commit so much effort. You know, I was making making my living dancing as a professional dancer. Um, also teaching dance and then going to school. And it was this weird position that I was in being like, I kind of sat with the idea that dance was never going to be what I wanted to do with my life. But the cards that I'm being dealt is that like, this is how I'm supporting myself financially and going to school. And, and it really was, I did Descendants while I was in school full time, which was okay. crazy. Like we shot on Victoria, which is an island, you know, a couple hours away. And I would take the ferry to go do midterms and then come back for rehearsal and then shooting. Like, it was just why, I don't know what I was thinking, but it was Vikings actually that made me, I'm four courses short from my business degree, <laughs> Mimi. And to this day during the pandemic, my dad was like, you want to go back and finish school? <laughs> you want to get that degree? And I'm like, I think that's past. I think that ship has sailed. But it was really Viking where I'm like, I think I might be able to do this full time. Well, not full yeah. time, but like support myself and right. just take that leap and kind of let that pressure of whether it's parental responsibilities or, you know, I, I just chose myself and my love for, it wasn't even love. I think it was, it was a little bit of fear of like, I don't know what I'm, you know, like jumping in the deep end, this risk. To, to continue acting but yeah it was it was Vikings that made me move to Ireland and um, I was there for six and then after that I moved right to LA and I've been here since yeah it was just yeah, yeah it, it was um a weird long way about of trying to finally um accept that acting is is you know the real dream of mine
Yeah, well, I mean, it is such a joy to to be able to watch you on screen, and so I'm grateful that that you oh, you ended up you. there. But I I do want to hear a little bit about your your dance yeah. background because as a movement, you know, like that's what my joy is in movement and just kind of how maybe you use your you know your dance background in your art your you know acting craft because I do know like there's so much that overplays when you know for my martial arts people ask like how does that you know kind of see, go out into the the other areas of your life and so I it's it, it's I'm just curious for you like what out of your dance background do you kind of bring to your acting craft if any oh my gosh well so much like to this day I I credit my dance experience as like such a big learning like place to learn you know whether I was a studio dancer growing up so it's like learning teamwork learning like you have to kind of speak up for yourself and like be self-sufficient and all these things that to go on set, I've used dance or at least movement in almost every single project that I've been a part of, you know, descendants, there's singing and dancing. So that's like a no brainer in Vikings. There was like, there ended up being a little bit, bit of movement that they just had no idea. For, let's say, let's bring warrior in. Like I didn't get to fight necessarily, but when the time came or when I was training with them, they're like, Oh, you have, movement you can pick up choreo and there's just there's like projects that you know I just finished something that I just did an episode on tracker and in the audition it said that she needs to be a fighter I didn't say that I had any experience I didn't realize I didn't say but you know even coming to and they just they drop you in the deep end of like okay you're going to come off the plane and literally go into a stunt rehearsal learn all these fights and I came back being like what if I wasn't a mover what would they have done? I know there's stunt doubles, but like they're just putting so much on at me at the, at the time. But I have to say, like, even awareness of like people on set, knowing everyone's jobs, what they do, because, you know, it's all one moving machine. I've worked with actors that like they just focus on themselves, which is absolutely fine. But they're so unaware of everything going on. And I think as a dancer, you have to be aware, you know, like whether it's beats and counts and I, I like camera movements. that to me is like, okay, those are other performers coming in at this time. And like, some people argue, like, you should just be focused on you. And I'm like, okay, we, you can argue that. But my argument is like, it's all one dance coming together mm -hmm. and like, you know, like stepping, I always watching your scene partner and the way they move around the camera, I have to clock that because that's their movement and their choice. I'm always thinking like choreography. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think it, you know, one day, hopefully very soon, I, I would love to direct as well. And I feel like it's, that's another step that makes complete sense to me. Like working with the first AD and, and everything is a moving, mm -hmm. um, yeah, a moving piece in the puzzle that just kind of fits all together perfectly. But movement has, it's been such a big part of like who I am as a person as well. And, and learning a lot of those things, like I said earlier, just like being self-sufficient, knowing how to take care of oneself on set and not being like kind of a deer in headlights. And it's all, it's all based on dance. I, I think that's what I took away from it at least. Yeah, I, I can completely see that. And and you um you mentioned Manny, which of course I know yes. because I'm a big uh Good Place fan. So oh. <laughs> so of course. Uh, but also you did hip hop together, correct? We <laughs> yes, we are just two kids from Canada trying to make something of ourselves down here. But we we met training for in a dance program, which okay. was like hip hop okay. fundamentals and performing together so you guys so, yeah, dance together fun. now do you guys still like we, bust out the moves uh, or, or battle <laughs> you know what I will admit the LA dance scene is so intimidating I never you'll never catch me in class especially because I just feel like everyone's there to like book a tour like I just want to I just want to like do a little cardio maybe get a little sweat on um so you'll never see me there but we'll like we'll have fun at home or something yeah, like we're yeah, yeah. he's a phenomenal dancer yes really, I believe it I mean he's good at everything he does um <laughs> but but he really he's a phenomenal dancer I think he's still if he could he would be taking more classes you'll mm. just never see me in there <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah it's too nerve-wracking I mean, there's too much pressure here <laughs> I I I am aware I am aware I had a, a small moment in time where I thought that might have been my career as well and it was a very different time like you know, 99, 2000 from now. So I am mm. so thrilled to oh, see the dynamic what a change. Great 
time. What a great <laughs> time in dance. The 90s, 2000s, like 99, yeah, for 2000. dance, but I mean, in yeah. LA for, for like Hollywood, oh. like that was a different time. Gotcha. Yeah, that was yeah. a different time, but for dance. Yeah. And for movement. Yeah. And for, for like, you were doing, you know, I know you did concert stuff too, like stage and you did all the choreography. That's, that's so exciting. I, I would love to see some videos. I would love to see some footage. No, no. <laughs> No one needs to see that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, one of the things I'm always curious about, because especially, you know, in Warrior, right, there I, there are some really intense scenes that in particular, like you, you, you've uh, had as well as all the other characters. But I'm always curious is, um, do you have like a ritual or an acting prep? Is there like a breathing thing? Or because of your dance, do you have like a warm up that you do? Like, what is your kind of like, prep for whether it's intense or not do you have kind of a ritual thing or a, a warm-up that you do yeah I that's so funny I am I would like to meditate more in life in general like outside of work and I, I can't say that I've stuck to that habit but I will say when I whenever I was working on warrior because some days are so so heavy when I would be picked up and, and you know taken to set there was always like a 40 to an hour um, minute drive. And I would always do like a 20, 25 minute meditation, just in the car, really ground myself. And it kind of set, it did set me up for just to be on the right place to set because you know, those days are really long. But usually I would do a meditation in season three, because the stuff was pretty dark in season three, especially for my lane. Um, I'm so grateful for that season. It was, such, you know, it made me work as an actor, which is all I, I really wanted. I actually did uh, coachings, like private coachings for, for my Ling. Every week I'd meet up with my acting coach. But the funny thing is, and I, and I told them it wasn't like your typical, it ended up being like therapy sessions for my Ling. like talking through, um, you know, where my head, where, where her head would be at, you know, why this, and that really prepped me up to do like a little bit more backstory, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like breaking down scenes and memorizing and like line reading. It was more like truly I'd come in as my lane and we'd just do therapy sessions, which was really cool. I'd never done something like that. Oh, um, I love that. I don't think he was prepared for that either. Cause he'd like, let's run lines next, next time we meet up. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> I don't need that. That's okay. <laughs> I just, this, is, this is much more helpful for me. Um, so yeah, that was kind well, of. Well, she's very different than you as you, as a person. <laughs> Which is I would a compliment, so. by the way. <laughs> I remember when we I spoke in the so. press junket. I'm like, she's so evil and you're so sweet sounding all the time. Like I can't, <laughs> I, it's like Langley. When I talk to Langley, I'm like, oh my gosh. But but yeah, I would imagine it's like the technical side you've, I don't want to say mastered, but you know, you know, you know how to break down choreo movement memorization, but I would imagine it's like, okay, how do I get into this, you know, kind of a sociopath, like this person mm -hmm. that just wants to basically rule the world and uh, you know what, what whatever I need to do to survive I think there is there's yeah. a huge survival uh theme for most of the characters on warrior right they're out there to just survive yeah. and and you can't always fault them like Hoon always says you know Jonathan uh, Chopper's like there's no good guys there's no bad guys and you can kind of one minute you hate one character and the, the next minute you empathize which is just great writing um but I would imagine you're like no I need to therapy out this character because there's a lot going on in her head <laughs> there was there was moments in season two well one and two when I would I would like message Jonathan or, or go to our writers to be like are we sure this is where she's going because there's just there's no way back from this it's such a you know severe consequence or decision that she's making and I just feel like as an audience member after this you know event it's like I don't know how she'll come back from this and you never because you know some people say it's always like it's great to play the villain I don't think my wing is I still don't truthfully I just you know um well she's an antagonist but I don't know like you said if she's sure, the, the villain sure. like Buckley is definitely the villain <laughs> crazy oh, but I love Langley so oh, much oh wait sorry you I lost your me? audio real yeah. quick you said Buckley repeat that last line oh I just said I just said Buckley I mean he's 
a little psycho to me, but um, <laughs> I love Langley and, and I think he's so incredibly talented and what he's done with Buckley and like the yes. character, whether it's like the voice and like the, the, the posture and the demeanor. Anytime I get a scene with Buckley, mostly in the carriage, it's, we're yeah. always in the carriage together. I, I love my time with Langley because he's, he's so talented. So yeah good. I was gonna ask you yeah. about your little clandestine meetings that you always have like yeah. how much off-screen like laughter and like how do you look at him as Buckley but then because I now have been very fortunate get to know Langley like is it yeah. weird to look at him as the Buckley character because you're on screen with him but then or, or is it just a, a switch because you're a professional actor and you're used to that but his character and yeah, I, I think it's so easy to see Langley as Buckley to me because, like, he, not that he's method by any means, but when he's in character, he, like, stays in character. And he, like, is really adamant on, like, you know, as soon as the he has the cane, he walks with a little bit of the limp. And right. um, he is such a professional. And I feel like, I feel like I didn't necessarily, there wasn't a lot of laughs. From my experience on Warrior because all my scenes are so dark yes. and like Joe you know I mostly work with Joe who plays yes. Young and like yeah. him and I are just like too like professional we're quiet we're just on set it's like very respectful and and we're just like we get the job done we love each other but like you know it's there's not a lot of fooling around okay. and I've been on set with like I've, I've seen like Jason and, and Andrew and I've been on set very briefly and they just have a ball of a type like with Chen and I'm like yes. this is so different like my experience <laughs> is so different and same with when Langley you know like it's you know we come we get the job done yeah it's in a carriage it's quick you know it's only two shots really mm -hmm. um, because it's such a small confined space but so I think when I show up I'm like ready to just like work but the lovely side of Langley is that he's a Cape Town native. And so he was like, he really truly was, I think, you know, the person who really opened up his his home for all of us. He was really adamant on, you know, like family lunches and if we can do a dinner and he he showed us Cape Town or what the beauty is of of um of that country. And it just like he's just lovely. I mean, you know, he just like he really did add to uh, for the good our experience in Cape Town but yeah I would say like when I when I was on set I'm always just like ready to be like okay we just have to like we've got long days and not much yeah. time and we just gotta get it done Down to business <laughs> yes exactly well like you said yeah. too it's like because like Jason's character even though it's serious he's kind of like light and you know but you really like it's so much intensity and like you said there's just you know, that tone of it is, is different. So I, I think that's really funny though. You're like, wow, these guys are just playing around and not playing around, but you know, they get laughs. And, and like the, the thing that I forget is like, you know, they have the, the hop way house with like, you know, they have so many um, background performers that, mm -hmm. that are there with them all day. So there's like a lot, there's even like, even if they're not fooling around, there's chatter. There's just right, life. Right. Like, and Olivia has, you know, the brothel and there's like, right. there's, there's patrons and so it's always loud and like so exciting and then and then like long z and my it's just smiling and, and lee off you know <laughs> and like our two guys and so i'm sitting there just like okay <laughs> it's just a very insane set compared to i would imagine everyone else this yeah. is true this is true i never really thought about it that way but now that you're mentioning it yeah like the number of humans on set for those scenes is very different like you do have a yeah. very um you know except for like when you're out at the fight or something and everyone's there like you get yeah. to finally be in the thing but you know speaking of the times where you probably said hey are we sure we're gonna do this like is one of those times yeah. where you were like yep go ahead and snap my brother's neck it's all good was, was that one of the times you were questioning or or can you share it that was, like one of the times you yeah were it was about? it was definitely that moment because I was like if awesome you know obviously he not obviously the audience didn't know but like we knew he wasn't gonna die the lead character isn't gonna die in the first season but I'm like you're really pitting at what point are we gonna come together are we ever gonna come together or is it just you know sister versus brother for the rest of the show and a point was when I when I kill Long Z and I'm like what is you know what's her decision like why if someone's gonna kill him why does it have to be me like it's just like so you know and I got a lot of opinions about when that came out I heard 
from a lot of people, audience members, I mean, but yeah, there was just a few moments where I'm like, or even, you know, in season three with Leon, when I decide the relationship with Leon, when they, it wasn't that I went to them being like, she can't come back from this, but I'm like, if you have her lose Leon, that's it. Like Leon is her only constant in her life. So to lose, and I understood the, the, the point of it. They wanted to like strip her bare of everything, like stability in her life. But there, there were definitely moments where I'm like, oh man, my wing, like, what are you doing? (laughs) Or what do the writers have planned for me? Yeah. Um, oh, well, yeah. we're dying to know, actually. <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. We're dying oh. to know. And I, I have to say, I I think that the fans have spoken and spoken and spoken year after year after year. You are, I mean, I said it on that press junket, and it's just like this show keeps punching back. And I have had so many people reach out to me that aren't, um, weren't fans before or um, just weren't really sure. And they've been like, no, we're all in now. And I've been binge watching. I love the show now because martial artists are very really funny kind of group of humans when it comes to martial <laughs> arts shows. They're either like, what? Bruce Lee all in. It doesn't matter what it is. And the other half yeah. is leery. They're just like, hmm, is it going to be, you know, cheesy? Is the choreography? Right. Gonna, you know, they're they're right. leery. They don't want to dive in until it's been vetted, right? And so at this point, it's been pretty right. vetted. But even still, moving to Netflix, um, as heartbreaking as it's been to see you guys just tossed around from network to network, moving to Netflix did make it a lot more open to more people. So yeah. I think it's been good. I, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, positive stuff in terms of like everybody's everyone's on board with this. So I'm, I'm really hopeful. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I completely agree with you when you're saying like, they're a bit leery and they're just like, is it going to be, I don't even do a lot of action. I can't even say I do action. I've just been a part of something that's so, again, I'm biased, but I think the action is so incredible on our it's show. Fantastic. Brett it's Chan, fantastic. the whole team that now when I watch other shows or like movies where I'm like, Oh, like I'm just not impressed or like, <laughs> oh, they just put action in for the sake of putting something cool and like right. a pop or a moment or like they're cutting a lot. So the actors probably it's a double or I'm just so picky now, which yeah. I never thought I would be because I grew up <laughs> loving action. I mean, we grew up, my father raised us on like Bruce Lee movies, Jet Li, yes. uh, Jackie Chan. Yes, um, yes. And so now I'm I'm a little bit of a snob because of yeah. Warrior and I'll take of it. Of course, of um, course. No, Brett Chan and team they're fen- phenomenal um, incredible phenomenal incredible yes. they deserve all the roses um yes. Yes. He, he's just yeah he he was so adamant on on making the action and i think jonathan as well obviously but like of course, making of sure course. that the action was its own character mm-hmm. um i know i'm sure everyone talked about this but like the fact that he had the idea that every single character who does fight or movement has their own language in movement that we're not all doing the same thing and the same syllabus and the same technique. Like yes. every single performer has their own distinctive personality. I love that. And talking about Netflix that you're saying, it's been really amazing. I, I was a bit nervous. I think everyone else on the, on the cast were so excited for Netflix. And I, for me, I just didn't want to get my hopes up. I'm like, it's another network. We have been tossed around. We've been canceled a couple times now. And for me, I'm like, okay, like I was just worried that once it hit Netflix, it would just be amongst the other millions of shows and IPs that are on that platform. And lo and behold, like to our lovely surprise, it's been received so well. And I'm so grateful. I always thought Netflix was um, definitely a more, like it seemed like a, a better fit. For warrior and just in terms of like other shows that they have it, it makes sense like maybe the viewership will like bleed on to um warrior and i just feel like we've heard so many great things and just the fact that millions of more people have now watched our show that didn't know about it even or heard about it or didn't have max before or cinemax um so yeah we don't know what's gonna happen we know what we'd love to happen But at this point, it's like completely out of our hands. Uh, We're just, I think for me, I'm just so happy that our writers and creators and, you know, yes, the cast and crew, the cast, but 
everyone else kind of has their moment to shine. Just getting more people, you know, love bombing on the show, which has been nice. Yeah. Well, it's it's well deserved. And, you know, I've been a fan for a while. And, you know, one of the the big interviews that I had with Brett was kind of just talking about the action because of course as a martial artist and and, and I, I used to do stunts as well, like a little bit, right? Uh, in in film. And so like just just the respect for the level. But after talking to him, I really started to realize how special the warrior family is. Like I have been on a very limited number of sets in my very small, you know, um, world of of uh work that I used to do but it's like it was so special to just even hear about like the workouts they do all together in the morning and like just like all the things but then as I've been so fortunate to speak to so many of the cast members it is a really truly unique TV family like I know there's a lot of shows that say oh we're like a family and whatever but a lot of shows you work with who you do then you go on your way and you lose touch but it really this the cohesiveness in the warrior family and maybe it's because you guys are just like fighting every season to just you know whether it's because COVID hit or whatever the the next challenge was you guys have to do it together but I really feel like there's just a special dynamic and and I'd love to hear like your take on that I mean you did mention like in your world you're in this small tense set <laughs> but it's clear like Lynn Langley hosts you know the barbecue at his house or whatever yeah. and he feeds everyone and you guys you know and Perry's you know probably playing some instrument and it's just such a special <laughs> dynamic and I'd love to hear yeah. like your take because you've been on so many sets you're so you know, you've been you've been exposed to so many different dynamics. Do you feel that way that it is a really special warrior family? Yeah, I mean, I, I've said it a few times now, but I really do think like this show is going to be for me, at least that like once in a career, once in a lifetime, just just what it means to like whether the meaning of the show, the importance of this character, but also the family that we took away from it. I feel like a lot of I've been on sets where like there's egos or, you know, there's really established actors and, and everyone has their own process, whether it's, you know, I, they don't like to hang out with people or, you know, they take time. I think with warrior, what made it so special is we all came on board. Jonathan set this tone of like, we're all equals here. There's no like movie star. There's no. Yeah. Um, and because of that, we all met each other at the same place, which is like, we are all, there's no one that's better than anyone else. There's no one that like has that power dynamic. And Jonathan said that from the get-go, there's like a no asshole pro policy, which is so important. Like family, we all have our little hiccups, you know, not everyone's perfect. But then on top of this policy that, that Jonathan established, Brett then goes and establishes this wonderful like haven, I call it. In season one and two, not so much season three because I was very busy working, but in season one and two and every season, he was like, the stunt tent is yours. Everyone is welcome. You know, he sets a workout in season three. I didn't go as much because it was seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I can't do that. I, I love you, but I'm not going to wake yeah, up at no. five thirty to get picked up at six, show up at like, it's just not who I am. <laughs> um, but, but seasons one and two, it was like 9.30. We work out until noon. We all then travel to the catering. We all grab lunch, stunt team cast, whoever is available, eat lunch together. Like we are one. Right. Um, and he was always there for support and whatever, you know, him and his team, like whatever you needed, you can go to Brett. Whether it's like, I don't feel great on this scene. You know, they'll he'll set up times and lessons and privates, like whatever you needed. And so- even if you didn't work out, you you and you had to be in production office for like a a, a costume, um, costume fitting. I would I would walk to the Sunton after just to check in and like he set up like couches for us. We had like you know like fridge and everything so that you can just sit on the couch watch other people you know training and just catch up. Like it really was home base, yeah. and that says like. A lot. I've never been on a project like that. Ever. I've never been on a project like that. Yeah. I never. mean, just even and the dynamic of the stunt team and the, the cast, you know, the actors together oh, yeah. is that that alone is a little more rare. I think it's, you know, it that's not the norm but for sure. But for me, I'm like, why isn't that the norm? You know, like right. these, especially on a show like Warrior, where like 
it's so stunts heavy. It's like they yeah. are the cast, you know, they are <laughs> oh, we're all one part of the team. Yes. Um, that that and, you know, team Brett can make like, your show or break your show at that point. Because if exactly. the stunt team sucked, then the show would not be what it, it is. So exactly. Yes. Yes. And yeah. um, we, I mean, Brett, like Langley, we, you know, like Sunday brunches, Brett would always have a, a, a team brunch on Sundays. Yeah. Um, he's just amazing. Like it really was, if you're not available, he understood. You, you show up whenever you want, yeah. and he will accept you as who you are. That was like the overall feeling of the whole cast yeah. and crew. Is like we just meet each other where we're at, and we really are a family. And I feel like I don't know if this will ever happen again mm-hmm. for me um, as an actor and this experience of what this is. Like Andrew is my brother. I call him bruv. He calls me. Like we really are. I didn't know Olivia before this. We're both from Vancouver. Crazy that we didn't know each other. And she's forever family. And every cast member, you know, we built these really personal, really, we go to each other's weddings. Like, it's crazy. Yes. Like, it really yeah. is something where um, a little unheard of. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very special. Yeah. It's so cool to watch it, but you can almost very special. tell Right. Because there's something yeah. very special about the way everybody, like you said, a seamless dance on set, like on, yeah. in the show, it's just seamless. And you just you could just feel this special energy. And um, it's 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 like the cohesiveness is there. But I love hearing that. And it's it is interesting because now, I mean, Warrior, you know, started when it did and there was all these breaks and then COVID and everything. So it's been such a long span of time. And since then, Many of you have gone on to do just such um, even more work. And, and, you know, of course, Andrew's career has really taken off with, mm. with some of the movies that he's been in. And so, but it's w- really interesting because I can see that no matter what, when season four films, <laughs> <laughs> you guys yeah. will actually come back to that haven. And I, I you know, I feel like, and I, I don't know because I I'm not around, but like, well, I actually hope to be around. I have to just show up. Uh, I t- I've been telling Brett, I'm coming you to the show. I'm coming to the workouts for sure. But I was like, yeah. I need to have like a you know a moment with you guys because uh, I feel so connected in this in this outsider way. But like, I feel like you all will come back to that haven, regardless of where everybody is in their career. You know, fast forward mm-hmm. several years later, nobody will come in with like, well, I've been on this you know, movie now. And so I come back to you or your family as elevated, right? Like, I feel like everyone will kind of come back and it'll be like a reunion. It's just this really special moment of time that you guys will always kind of have, which is really unique. I move on. I'll add to that. Like, even when we went back for season, season three, Jonathan called all of us individually just to be like, because at that point, you know, you're right. Koji had gone on and he, he's already working and people were signed on for different shows and, and, or the pandemic and like, you know, who knows where people's heads were at. Um, But he called us all individually being like, is this something that you would even be interested in? Because if you don't want to, there's key characters, but collectively, like if some characters didn't want to come back, there's no show. So he called us individually being like, would you want to, you know, there isn't a for sure, but I just need to like get a head count because there's no point in me like pushing for it. If you know, you don't even want to be on the show anymore. And the fact that all of us came back, like there wasn't a missing person is, I didn't think it was going to happen. I'm like, for sure someone has like another show that's a priority. Some, I don't, I can't confirm, but I like, I want to say like people pushed other projects or like, you know, they made it a priority to come back for Warrior. And I think that speaks volumes about what the experience was overall. I mean, it's not a, it's not an easy show to shoot by any means, but the feeling behind it and and yeah the the relationships that we've built is beyond you know how hard of a shoot it is yeah very yeah. unique very unique well I, we're excited yeah. to see what happens and obviously we're going to keep telling the fans to watch the show uh, to binge the show to tag the show and all the things that we've been <laughs> doing these last uh, couple months but we'll keep on that of course but what what do you get downtime ever because i know you're like oh i'm shooting here i'm doing this i mean what do you what do you when do you when you get to relax what what is it you like to do yeah. other than take care of the doggy <laughs> Well, I was going to say, like, be at home with the dog. Um, (laughs) When I, I'm so I'm based in LA now. I always try to make it a point. Summer and winter is when we go back to Vancouver. 
Okay. It's spring, summer is the best in Vancouver. Oh, ah, it's just so beautiful. Um, and then winter break with the family. We don't really get a lot of downtime. I mean, you know, I'm saying that off the heels of a five month strike and what <laughs> all we had was downtime. Right. This is, but, true. Um, this is true. Yeah. It's just about like spending time with family because when we are working, you know, Manny shoots the show in London. I was in Cape Town for years. Like yeah. we're always all over the place that if we could just come back together, I also feel like getting older, I cherish my time at home now. Like I look forward to going back to Canada as much as I can um, for as long as I can just to like hang out with my parents and my sisters. But I don't know. I, I told man, I'm like, I have to travel more. We travel mm-hmm. so much for work, but when it's for work, we don't get to experience yeah, the country you have the time. or you're just distracted. You're like, you have mm-hmm. something else on your mind that you have to do. I would love to travel more. Yeah. I think this year is going to be a little bit busy, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, um, yeah, I'm just home in Vancouver the second I can. My yeah, parents called me the other day, being like, "When are you coming home?" I'm like, Aww. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. I don't know what my schedule. I don't know. I, and that's the thing. Langley and I were talking once, and he goes, "Well, you know, the the best way to book, you know, the the part of a lifetime is to plan a really big vacation. Go on vacation. <laughs> plan Go on a vacation. really big lavish vacation, and then it'll get canceled because you'll get a call about yeah. this show that you auditioned for eight months ago that went away yeah. and suddenly is back or something, you know. And I think he was referring yeah. to One Piece at the time when he goes, "Yeah, you know, of course I." planned this thing and because that's the number one way to 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 get to guarantee you're going to get a show booking is plan a good vacation is that how that happened for him yeah i I I want to say we were talking about it like he was like well you know this is how it always works out it's like you just never know but i would imagine also for you and manny it's hard because like like you Mm. said if you're filming different different locations that must be super challenging to be you just want to be home when when you're when the the stars align time-wise the funny thing is we're so used to being long distance. Like before the pandemic, we were like at least six months always apart. Wow. We were all yeah. over the place filming. And so we're so used to it that we were, you know, blessed with a, in a way with the pandemic kind of being together. Yes. And even this writer strike was the longest amount of time that we've gotten to be together in one place. In one place. Yeah. Um, which is why, and that happened, you know, just a few months ago where I'm like, that's not good. Like that we're so <laughs> that there's too much distance between us. Um, but no, we're just, you know, we're grateful to be able to do what we do. And mm-hmm. I don't know how long this is going to last. So we're just <laughs> like, we'll take it as it comes. But yeah. yeah, to be, we're definitely cherishing the time that we have together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah. uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to finally get to talk is to it you. You're done? my first, you're, well, you're my first email warrior because all the schedules have just not aligned and I'm like so Diane is is number one I mean the press <laughs> junket doesn't count I told I think I told you guys I'm like I felt like I was speed dating the warrior cast it was so stressful <laughs> was like, that not my format so, I am not good at this <laughs> but it was so well organized to the point where like even like between interviews me Joe and Langley were like it just all went, it felt like each of us got a sentence in and that was, and it was like, okay, on to the next and you're moving. Yeah. And it was wild. So I appreciate you jumping on that. And you yeah. know, oh, like it was great. Yeah. It was to great to, to meet everybody in that I hadn't met yet. And I was so fortunate every room I went into, I, I didn't know someone already. So it wasn't like, oh, uh, it, it, it was such a, that's not my this is my format, like long form, one hour. Right. Like you had asked, is it two hours? I was like, sure, we could talk for two hours. I just don't <laughs> want to take up your time. But yeah, this is my format. And so I'm like, by the time I start my question, my time will be up. I'm so like, blah, 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 right? I, I, I'll go on and on. Yeah. So that was, that was, it was fun, but it was super stressful. So I was like, I need, I need more time. I want to get to know you guys better <laughs> and really like hear your story. And everybody, you know, I started this podcast. Everyone has such a fascinating story to tell, regardless of whoever, I've spoken to and it's it's just been such a privilege to be able to share in these conversations so thank you so much and um, oh my gosh is there is there anything else you want to share like upcoming projects or anything you want to promote or is it all secrets um no I'll I'll just I'll just stick with warrior and say um that I appreciate everyone taking the time to binge the show please keep binging it if you love it um spread the word and we would love to come back well, we don't know, but we would love if we could to come back, whether it's for another season or a movie, just to wrap up these stories and these characters that we love so much. But 
I really do appreciate everyone who's, you know, said lovely things or just shared and, and continually support the show. So awesome. thank you. <laughs> well, and thank, thank you, you, Mimi, for taking the time. I, I, ra- I ramble on and on. So I hope you got not something. At all. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> you are not a rambler. You are not a rambler. Oh. Very concise. Very concise. It was such a pleasure. Hopefully you'll come back and talk to me again. Um, or if our Lovely. worlds connect, I'll get to interview you in person one day. So <laughs> hey, come, let's hang out. I'm here. All right. <laughs> That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram or Facebook. 